we're here in the Hollywood Hills with Kalina Paisan, and she came in from New York City, she's thinking about moving to Los Angeles, and has an epic voice. And we've been kind of discussing about how she could get involved with our musical, The Most Hated Men, and she has an amazing story from having performed at the White House to going on tour, performing in front of Jay-Z and partnering with Def Jam, and now partnering with the World Artists United. I think that she's totally amazing. And she has a lot of ideas to share about success mindsets and her experience in the music world and the entertainment industry. And I th thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank it's you really for having cool. me. But I'd love for you to share your story because you got involved so young. I've, I've not met many people that have kind of got success in the entertainment world from like a kid. I'd love for you to talk about how that lifestyle has developed and what that's like. Well, it was, it was like a whirlwind for the entire time <laughs> my whole life. Um, I had started playing the piano and uh, dancing ballet and vocal lessons since I was three years old and I had very supportive, supportive parents and uh, when I was seven years old I started to sing and play at the same time and I just kind of knew already that I wanted to be a singer and my dad also just had the vision in line with mine so he kind of just took me everywhere that he could met anybody and and never you know like singled anyone out um, put anyone over anyone he he just whatever opportunity came he was just super open to it so which led to me meeting Norman Lear at nine years old and him wanting to sign me to his label um, and then at 11 years old I met Quincy Jones and he flew me to his house in LA and my dad and I and and I sang for him and his whole family and his, the, the whole staff everyone and um, and then I ended up going to We Are the Future in Rome and singing with Andrea Bocelli and singing the title song of the so it was just it was just kind of like being open to opportunities and just kind of letting it flow and and just doing the work and and having the passion and loving it will just take you places that you wouldn't even imagine. So my dad had the vision and I kind of was just open to and just loved singing and wanted to just do this. So from then on, from there, I, I had signed to Def Jam at 13 and released an album at 17. So I, was, I spent those four years just in the studio learning from so many people and um, working and still in high school at the same time too. <laughs> so I, I didn't want to get homeschooled. Um, so I... I was doing that and released the album at 17 and it got Grammy nominated. So it was just like, it was just incredible. So after that, you know, it, 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 since things happened so fast and my whole like youth was, you know, filled with that, it, it was like, okay, cool. Now I can kind of take some time to breathe and, and reflect and, and live and, you know, just kind of take, see what's, what the next step is. My um, friend Tidy, he, uh Basically, when he was in high school, he created the number one album in Australia. He had this song called Redefined, and uh, he was performing on the weekends in front of 10,000 people. Yet, during his time in high school, like you, he was going to school, he was kind of like the shy, quiet guy. And, <laughs> you know, um, he's doing uh, scoring with us also. Oh, um, cool. I guess, like, I'm curious if... Uh, you kind of like growing up in a world where there's other people that are kind of like yourself, the superstars and what have you, and there was kind of like your soul circle, or was it more like a normal girl soul circle on the weekdays, like tidy, and on the weekends living a totally different life? Um, it was both. Yeah. <laughs> I know the, the weekdays, yeah, I was in school, and then I guess outside of that too, even during the weekdays, like I would go to the studio after school and spend hours and hours until, you know, 11 p.m. or 12 a.m. and and it's not it wasn't like against my like I loved doing that but um yeah so it was kind of just I I don't know how I separated it but but it was it was kind of that combination yeah now in, in your world do you feel like most of your friends are in the entertainment world have you tried to focus on that or are you trying to kind of just about build your network organically in all sorts of different directions oh, both oh, definitely organically I I don't think just staying in the entertainment world is I mean, at least for me, I, I, because I, I like to expand my mind and, and, you know, converse with different types of people. And, and I think in that way, you know, you, you build your knowledge and you expand your horizons and it's, it, it, it also enhances creativity. So I, I know that in general, I just, I just like, I don't like staying in, like, I, all my friends have to be singers, all my friends, you know, like, I have friends that are singers just because it's like we attract what we are, essentially. But um, I also just have friends that are in 
completely different fields as well. So. Well, yeah, I mean, we were in the car ride here, and you were talking about how you're interested in law and all sorts of other <laughs> yeah. intellectual endeavors. I heard from Jalen that you speak, what, eight languages? Well, I speak three, <laughs> but I, I sing in, like, eight. Oh, you sing in eight. And, and, and counting. <laughs> you don't necessarily understand what you're singing? <laughs> no, I, I do want you do? to. Yeah, okay. I do, but um, it's, it's just easy for my mind to pick up, you know, because growing up in a multicultural home, pretty much, and, and my parents studied abroad in Russia, and um, Russian was my first language, so it's just like cultures and, and language, and, and I've been singing in many different languages since I was little, so it's just kind of... So you speak uh, Russian, English, English, English Spanish, yeah. <laughs> and you also sing in what, Arabic, mm -hmm. Hebrew? Turkish. Turkish. Yeah, French. Just French, Italian. <laughs> Italian? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it was my goal when I was on tour, that before I met my wife, this is my goal, I couldn't do this after I met her, but um, my original goal was after I did that world tour of 270 cities and 70 countries that I was going to go to Russia for a month oh, wow. and try to sp learn how to speak in Russian and do a canned, memorized routine. So I wouldn't actually necessarily know all the things I was actually saying. Right. <laughs> I kind of would because it's the same kind of presentation and speech I was going to give and then do it in the France and do a tour of the south of France and all the main cities and do it in Germany and, and do it in all the, like, uh, the main cities in Germany because we do programs in 18 of them. Wow. I never got around to it, but I remember a quote you from. Still do it someday. <laughs> maybe yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Things are things are a little bit fast paced now. Right. Nowadays, like Monday through Thursday, I'm usually in Boston, and on the weekends I go to Vegas with day trips to Los Angeles. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> At least until the summer, I'm gonna go tour around Europe for a bit. Nice. But I mean, I think that like, world culture and just that understanding of other cultures and traveling around the world just really develops you so much. I mean, I remember. Uh, I think it was Eleanor Roosevelt who said that if you only stay in America, you have really just read the first few pages of the first chapter that is available in this awesome book. Wow. And uh, I imagine you yourself, who's traveled to all different places around the world, have probably gotten this massive understanding of people and humanity mm -hmm. and what have you, just from rural culture. It probably has even inspired you and influenced you know, your life and yeah, music. Yeah, for sure. You know. Yeah. So when you sing, are you thinking about like those things that have really inspired you personally? Or are you trying to find particular kind of themes that you're looking for? Um, right now, at least in the stage, it, it's very, it's things that kind of affected me personally. I'm working on, well, I'm just wrapping up a, an acoustic project uh, called The Interlude. And it's kind of like this interlude phase of my life where, uh, again, I was taking in everything that happened for the past like 18 years. and and um, just kind of diving inward and seeing what I can pull from all of those experiences, where I was mentally and kind of where I am now, where I'm going, and, and just all of the things that affected me. So that right now, at least, I'm, I, I was diving inward and then expanding from this project, you know, yeah. who knows what, I, what I'll pull from. No, that's cool. I mean, the, the other thing that was interesting to me about just spending so much more time in the music industry in the last six months. I think most of my friends are in the music world that I've been hanging out and networking with, mm -hmm. either from the dance side, beat making, singing or as artists, or in the production side. Um, but I guess one of the things that's been interesting to me, even just like uh, this weekend, um, hanging out with like Fred Durst and Perks from Made Mafia, I heard that, uh, you know, Fred and also the better artists are more interested in not just the singing part, but to differentiate themselves to gain more into story. And so I know a lot of people are trying to get more involved with in movies and music, and that's also what I was interested in, because originally I was going to create music videos that were education-based rap videos oh, wow. to kind of just build traffic to my YouTube channel, which is about how to take the parallels of how we built this pickup artist industry from scratch mm -hmm. and apply the, the same kind of skill sets from cold approach to mindsets for success, to losing your fear mm -hmm. and overcoming that, and applying that to the business world, where you have the hidden cameras and business and mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's my main focus now, outside of this kind of stuff. But I guess uh, so many artists are interested in kind of like paralleling from like dance and story mm -hmm. and other kinds of arts. Like what kind of the arts that are you most interested in other than your voice and singing? Um, I do love film and I, I want to expand and, and get into that world as well. I kind of dabbled in it a little already, but I, I definitely want to dive into that. I love storytelling and um, I also love dance. I've, I've danced for like 15 years as well. Um, I love art, paint, painting and, and I, my, my siblings, they paint, but I'm the only one who <laughs> I can't. But 
that that's something I, I just I appreciate and and I would love to just like explore more of and cool yeah. <laughs> Well, now that uh, you're kind of like out of school and you're able to focus solely on your career, mm -hmm. what's your uh, life schedule like? Hmm. Well, I start off my morning with like a morning ritual that I kind of developed in the past year and a half. Um, and it's, it's kind of just me centering myself for, throughout the day, for, before I start the day. And um, I write in my journal and that's kind of like fleshing out just like my thoughts and um, that helps with my creativity throughout the day too. So whatever like random babble that I need to, <laughs> you know, like let out. Um, so every morning I write in my journal, I pray and I meditate. And then after that, you know, I, I kind of, I go on hikes and then I'll write a song or even while I'm hiking, I'll get inspiration for a song or um, then I have some hours set aside for practicing and, um, hang out with my friends. It's, it's kind of just like every day, it's something different. Um, well, I mean, it sounds like shows. you're um, just like, I mean, even as an artist, from what I've known, just from meeting artists more recently, it feels like every artist is kind of like an entrepreneur in and of yourself. I mean, Boy, yeah. yeah, I mean, you, you have um, your own team and, you know, you're working with World Artists United. Are you working with other people also that are building your brand too? Um, yeah, I mean, I have management and I also, just have the team that has been that has helped me throughout the years. I have my engineer, I have my writing partner, and um, people that just kind of are. We have that chemistry and that flow. So, and then World Artists United, of course. So, just all of it just kind of came together naturally, and it didn't. It, just the way the universe placed things and, and situations. So, it's it's kind of cool for it for, to see how it built and and kind of just expanded even more. Yeah, I was, I was interviewing even. Uh, Instagram and uh, YouTube celebrities and they were talking about their team and so many people they look at an artist or a creator like yourself and don't think that you kind of just do everything magically <laughs> you know but they don't see this <laughs> massive team and infrastructure behind mm -hmm. you so I think it's really interesting to see that from like a, a business standpoint yeah I mean the entertainment world is a business too yeah you know like so it's the music business so it's like it may seem magical I guess to people because we're like on stage singing and stuff but yeah it's like so yeah. what are your uh, yeah. biggest inspirations of the people that you've met while you've been developing your career? John Mayer. John Mayer. Oh my God, he's like the top for me, just in all areas. Um, I freaking love Esperanza Spalding. <laughs> um, who else? Let's see. Uh, Stevie Wonder. And... Yeah, I have a whole, I mean, growing up, I, I was obsessed with Winnie Houston, Mariah Carey. Um, yeah, it's, this is like Corinne Bailey Ray. I can name a whole bunch of people, but those are like the core. Yeah. Now, you're, you've been living in New York for quite a long time. Now you're thinking about moving to L.A. Why, yeah. why, why is that uh, dynamic happening? I mean, I'm such a core, like at my core, I'm such a New Yorker in so many ways, but out here it's just <laughs> I don't know it's just so different and I think also it's it's like a different energy and I've been in New York forever so I, I know that it's time for me to kind of expand and and just like see where this energy how this energy affects me and and I really just love it in general I, I, I get up and I'm, I'm excited and I'm happy not that I'm not excited in New York <laughs> but in New York it's just like ah <laughs> you know it's like so much tension and so here, I'm just, I feel a little more carefree. I, I feel you. Like, New York is so fast when I'm now Yeah. After. I mean, I'll go to the East Coast every week and the West Coast every week. I mean, even L.A. is fast for me, so I go to Vegas to chill out, oh, which wow. is ironic. <laughs> I guess so. You know, I mean, I, I, it's, it's kind of funny because everyone thinks Vegas is, like, the most jam-packed. But mm -hmm. I think that I've kind of carved a choir life near a bunch of country clubs to play really? golf at and chill. My routine oh, involves wow. me hanging out with my cats, my wife, playing golf. <laughs> Uh -huh. You know, working on my projects that I was talking about, how I spend my time between Harvard and the musical and the business. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, thanks so much. It was so awesome just chilling with you today. We'll grab Thank some lunch. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Yeah, cheers. This is amazing. <laughs> if you uh, enjoyed the video today, please subscribe to my channel, write your comments below, and look forward to some more videos in the future. Cheers. Mm -hmm.